Earlier this year, the New Horizons spacecraft made a flyby of the Kuiper Belt object Ultima Thule, this object being billions of times dimmer than the typical star you see in the night sky. So how exactly were they able to discover Ultima Thule, and would they be able to do it again for another flyby? Let's talk about that. So to begin, in my last video on Ultima Thule, I discussed a basic overview of the actual flyby, what we learned about the object, and what information there is to come. But in this video, I'm going to be primarily focusing on the actual discovery of the object Ultima Thule and why it was so challenging. So to begin, we must understand how exactly we're able to observe these objects in our solar system. And the main concept originates from sunlight. All these objects are reflecting light that originally comes from the sun. So whether whether it be planets, moons, asteroids, or other comets, we have to be able to realize that the light that we see that's coming off of them isn't from the object itself, but originating from the sun. So there are three main concepts that define how bright an object appears here on Earth. The first one being the object's proximity to the sun itself. The closer it is to the sun, the brighter it will appear. So the planets such as Mercury and Venus, the two closest planets to the sun, appear very bright here on Earth just because they are that close. Then another factor that comes into play is how large the object is. The bigger the object, the more sunlight it's able to reflect, which is why we're able to see planets such as Jupiter and Saturn with our naked eye, just because they are so massive. And then the third aspect is how close the object is to the Earth. So for example, the moon is much smaller than the planet Jupiter. However, since it's so close to Earth, it appears much brighter in the night sky. So all these things play into a factor when discussing how bright objects are or how bright they appear on the surface of Earth. Now all the planets that I've mentioned so far are visible here on Earth with the naked eye, but by introducing a telescope or binoculars you can see more objects, and that's pretty straightforward. If you want to be an amateur astronomer, it's recommended that you use a telescope just so you can see more things, whether it be the rings around Saturn or some of the Galilean moons around Jupiter. But by getting a larger telescope or moving up into an observatory, you can then appear to see more objects whether it be smaller asteroids, comets, the moons around Mars, or many different things. However, as the objects you're trying to observe get farther away from the sun and smaller and smaller, it becomes much more of a challenge overall to visualize them. Because as I mentioned before, the farther they are from the sun, the less they're going to reflect light, and the smaller they are, the less they're going to reflect light. So all these things play into a factor on how well we're able to see them. For example, the dwarf planet Pluto is a million times dimmer than the planet Saturn, which makes it much more challenging to observe. So something that you can see generally in the night sky, such as Saturn, you can't see Pluto generally in the night sky because it is a million times dimmer. It requires a pretty high-tech telescope to be able to see it. So then this leads us to the question of how exactly were we able to discover the small Kuiper Belt object Ultima Thule. And this story begins with the launch of New Horizons. As mentioned in the last video, New Horizons was mainly focusing on doing a flyby of Pluto and hoping to do a few flybys of Kuiper Belt objects. But this mainly meant that they were going to focus on going to Pluto first and then finding objects along the way. So the main trajectory or the orbit that they were going to do was basically set in stone. And this is good because that gave them around a decade to be able to look for objects beyond Pluto because when it was launched, they didn't know what objects they would want to fly by. However, as they started to try and observe this region of space, they quickly realized that it was somewhat challenging. The good thing that they had was that they knew what the trajectory would go to. So they knew that they didn't have to look in the entire night sky, but rather a very small patch to where the New Horizons spacecraft would actually be able to get to. But the bad news was that this small patch in the night sky was actually somewhat aligned with the Milky Way galaxy. Now you might be confused, why is that necessarily a bad thing? But imagine trying to spot maybe a match sitting next to a bonfire. It'd be very challenging to decide where exactly that match is because the bonfire is much brighter behind it. That's almost the exact same thing or the exact same challenge that astronomers had here. The Milky Way galaxy, which was fairly bright behind a very, very dim object. Let's take 
take this for example. Let's say that this object is supposed to represent Ultima Thule or what you're trying to find in the night sky. And then if you add the background light or what's being emitted by the Milky Way galaxy, it becomes much more challenging to spot where exactly Ultima Thule would be. So this was what was going against them. Were they actually going to be able to find this Kuiper Belt object? And in fact, by using ground-based telescopes, they were able to find a little bit over 140 objects, but none of them were close enough to the trajectory that they would actually be able to get to them. Therefore, they had to step up and use the Hubble Space Telescope. The Hubble Space Telescope would give them various benefits, two of the main ones being that it would allow them to see dimmer objects, and also some of the stars that are behind what they're looking for would then appear less blurry because of the atmosphere scattering light for any ground-based telescopes. So by using the Hubble Space Telescope and taking a wide range of images in this patch, they were able to get rid of the background stars and find a small handful of objects that were actually close enough to New Horizons trajectory that they could perform these flybys. All these objects being around 20 to 50 kilometers in diameter. Now to put this into perspective, let's remember that Pluto is 1 million times dimmer than Saturn, but an object like Ultima Thule this far away from the sun and being this small is actually 22 billion times dimmer than the planet Saturn as it appears here on Earth. Therefore, it's actually impossible to see these objects with ground-based telescopes. Therefore, the only way to be able to discover this thing was using Hubble. So this leads us to the questions of, could New Horizons fly by a different Kuiper Belt object even further from the sun? And this is something that some of the scientists working on the project actually have a lot of interest in. Since the batteries on the mission are gonna last well into the 2030s, they predict that they have around a decade or so to either find another object, perform a small maneuver on their trajectory, and be able to form another flyby. So ultimately, they might actually be able to perform another flyby. The only issue is, can we find another object. Remember, this thing was incredibly dim and reaching almost the capacity of what Hubble was able to see. So if we're going further and further away from the sun, and if it's going to be around the same size of Ultima Thule, it's just going to get dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. Therefore, the main challenge is going to be finding an object that's going to be along our trajectory rather than just being able to get there. So we'll have to see what they're able to find in the future. But if you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like and subscribe to this channel. If you have any questions about Ultima Thule or the New Horizon spacecraft, feel free to let me know below. But thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.